course, is New England's Tony Eason. Incredibly, Eason, in his first season as a starter, has thrown only one interception. And against the Jets' defense vulnerable to the pass, number 11 came out throwing. But this 26-yard hookup with number 86 Stanley Morgan was the only offense of any significance in the game's opening nine minutes. I try to go into my races. In the form of quarterback sacks. Eason was victimized by Jets rookie Ron Perot, number 74, in a rare sack. For what the Jets gave, they also received. New York quarterback Pat Ryan could not sidestep the heavy Patriots pass rush as defense set the tone in this heated battle of division rivals. Following New England's show of defensive might, Ryan and the Jets regrouped, and New York began moving the ball through the air, with Ryan throwing medium-range passes to wide receiver Lamb Jones, number 80. Jones, playing in his first game of the 1984 season following a broken collarbone, caught two passes on a Jets drive that ended with a 46-yard field goal by kicker Pat Lee. The Jets led 3-0 late in the first quarter, but they quickly extended that lead, the catalyst being running back Freeman McNeil, number 24. McNeil raised 53 yards down the left sideline for the longest run from scrimmage of his four-year pro career. Returning after a one-week absence due to a rib injury, McNeil set up the game's first touchdown, a seven-yard strike from reserve quarterback Ken O'Brien to third-string tight end Rocky Cleaver, number 89. It was a shining moment for two of New York's understudies. O'Brien had replaced a dazed Ryan earlier in the period, and the touchdown was the first as a pro for the second-year quarterback, as it was for Cleaver, a free agent from Montana also in his second NFL season. The sophomore score gave New York a 10 to nothing lead as the first quarter came to a close. Up to the challenge. completions, the final one the result of Eason's outstanding ability to use the pocket to maneuver out of trouble, set up the field goal. Only two ticks left on the clock in the first half, Tony Franklin drilled his second field goal. This went a 27-yarder as the Patriots refused to quit. They still trailed 20-6 as the half ended. But led by Eason, they had fought back. They still had a ways to go, but they let the Jets know that the second half would not be easy. As a matter of fact, for New York, it would be a nightmare.
coming up with several amazing plays that may have surprised even themselves. Tight end Lynn Dawson somehow came up with a less than picture perfect pass. And then little used running back Craig James came out of mothballs to pick up more yardage. Again, the Patriots could muster only a field goal, but it was not a sign of the Jets resuming control. Quite the contrary, in fact, it was simply the first salvo of a remarkable second half rally. And New England kept it going as assistant coach Rod Russ' defense continued to bottle up the Jets' offensive efforts at every turn. Unfortunately for New England, the touchdown was disallowed. One of the referees ruled that Mark Gastineau had Eason in his grasp and had blown the whistle before the throw had been completed. The Jets appeared to be getting their first piece of good news in the second half, as the Pats were denied a touchdown and sent in reverse. In the first quarter, this might have been a New England disaster, but now they were playing with confidence. They ignored this setback and reloaded as Eason threw another touchdown pass, and this time it counted. Wide receiver Stefan Starring hauled in his fourth score of the year, a club high. And America's soap opera team found themselves in the lead for the first time in the ballgame. The key was Tony Eason's ability to step up in the pocket, avoid the rush, and fire the pass quickly to the waiting Stefan Starring. Plenty of time still remained for a Jet comeback, but it simply wasn't going to happen. New England soon regained possession and made sure they kept the ball with a time-consuming drive. The featured performer was Craig James, who had done little before today, but was now the Patriots' headlining star. In eight previous games, Craig had only 78 rushing yards total. Today, James would gain 79 yards on 10 carries. He did most of the work on this game-clinching drive. Then let number 33, Tony Collins, pick up the touchdown on a four-yard thrust through the Jets' middle. The Patriots were on the verge of doing it again, and the Foxborough fans were in a frenzy. They had come out today as much out of curiosity as for their love of football to see what the NFL's version of the young and the restless had in store for this episode. And the fans were not disappointed. Only a few minutes remained, and if the Jets could be stopped one last time, this soap opera would have a happy ending for New England. Have a happy ending for New England. Starting quarterback Pat Ryan had returned, and he did hook up with Lamb Jones for one picturesque reception. But that was it for the Jets. Just a few plays later, Ryan was intercepted by veteran linebacker Steve Nelson, number 57, and the game was over. That's deep.